Hi, this is James from the Professional Services team and this is a short tutorial to show you how to import and manage software CIs. In our previous tutorials we have shown you how to prepare for your data imports. We've also shown you how to import hardware CIs. So the actual software CI imports are exactly the same but slightly different in terms of the tables we're going to use. We're going to have an overview of the actual available columns against the actual CI. We're going to have a look at the two different avenues that you can go down uh, with software CIs. One which is a just a general overview and outlook of how many licenses you've got and one which is a full audit in terms of where the software are actually based on, are they on a ma machine, who are they actually assigned to, um, whether you want to get notifications or when you're running out of licenses or not. So there's two different avenues you can actually go down there. Before you start going into and importing your CIs, there's a few questions that you may wish to ask yourself. Um, what are you trying to achieve from actually managing software in the CMDB? Do you simply want to be able to update them every time a machine has been updated? Do you want to have just a general outlook to see how many licenses are left? So there's a few questions that you may wish to ask yourself before going ahead and changing your support works or even just importing data. So we're just going to have a quick recap of the data import itself. If you remember we have imported a few hardware CIs and these were against categories. So in the File, Manage CMDB and Categories and Configuration Types menu, you can see here that we have a few pre-configured categories. We, we did them under the Hardware category. What we're going to do is we're going to create a few CIs under the Software category and we're going to create a new sub category. So let's add in MS Office. And then within MS Office, I'm just going to configure a new configuration type of let's say project. Okay, so you can see here that I've selected in the CI data form CMDB underscore software. This is indicating that I wish to use this particular extension table which will contain some software based columns. So I'm just going to click on add record and don't forget just to make sure that there is statuses that's actually come through here such as operational faulty decommissioned. This is important for when you actually do your import this will be mandatory information on the form. So let's just have a quick recap of how we actually did the imports itself. What we had done is you could either link your support work server to a database or a Microsoft SQL database, Oracle, MySQL, or you can have a simply a spreadsheet. I think it's probably the most common use of import is the using a spreadsheet if you have that information such as license information. And the way you would map that across is you would map the actual fields itself using the schema report and down here you can simply just have a look at the particular tables and the information that it gives you in relation to your particular database. So once you've mapped across your fields um, you would have already created your spreadsheet or you've readied your information in your database would simply access the server and within the all programs support work server data import manager I'm just going to remind you of the Excel import that we did previously so remember we split this up into two separate imports one for the main CI information which you'll see in the first page such as the CI ID and the description status etc and the extended information which will contain the information about the license and perhaps warranty dates. So you can see in the target value mapping here in our hardware one we had chosen the CI type gen hardware stage table to import our extended information to. Simply if you were importing some software 
you would change this to CI type software stage. You can see once you've done that it will prompt you with these additional columns which have been put in this particular table. If you did want to add in your own particular columns you may wish to have a look at the, the database schema editor and make sure that when you do add them in make sure you add it into the staging table as well as the main table here, the CI type software. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to create a couple of CIs. So into the file, manage CMDB. Obviously you can do this manually or you can do this through the import. So you may wish to just remind yourselves or go through that previous tutorial which will show you how to do this. So I've just selected the type that we have just created. Give it a quick description. Okay, so I'm just going to give it the main information and also associate this to a test customer. There we go, that's chosen the organization automatically as well, which is handy. So I'll click on Add Record. So now we have our software CI. There we go. So in previous versions, um, you used to have a tab here at the top that says software details. Now we have a little button on the bottom left hand side that says details. This will appear with the extended information that we've seen on that data import. So if you did this through a data import, you would need to make sure that you go through into your staged items, process through staging, and then that will mean that the information will be there in your main database. You could effectively manage your licenses against an organization, against a site, or a particular contact. In this case, I've done it against a contact. So you would change the license count to one. You could put in the actual particular key itself. So it could be just one of these long keys. There we go, and then if you've obviously configured a manufacturer, you can simply put that in there as well. So I'm not going to add in the main details. So once you click on the details button again, you can see that that information is there and visible. Now that software CI has been associated to the customer, what you can do is open up an incident form, type in the customer's details. In the bottom right hand side here we have the services and items. This will view the list of items that they've been associated to. So this can be very handy for those that have a particular list of software that they have licenses for. And so you can give a control on how much it's being used perhaps cost as well. From this page you can also double click on the individual items and of course you can go back to the details if you do so wish to. So that's how you would manage your software CIs if you just want a general outlook of how many licenses are left. You can obviously just associate that to the organization rather than a customer. That will mean that it will appear for every single customer under that organization when you log a call. Then you can go, you can use that as a quick point of looking to see how many licenses are left before going ahead to uh, create a new request for a particular customer. The other option is to use a type of audit. So this would mean that if you want to do this you know very thoroughly and you want to scan your network to see where the software is based perhaps it's on particular machines and it's assigned to particular people and you want to keep an eye on costs and you want particular notifications so that if the license licenses do get low 
you know to order some more for this we do suggest to create your own entity now entities are these items down here so you can see manufacturers suppliers organizations customers etc these are managed through the edit current data dictionary I won't show you this in this tutorial but what this will do is this will allow you to manage your licenses in the same way that you can actually manage your suppliers so for example you can see a list of suppliers here this can be a list of license types and how many are left and give you more information around costs and um, you can add as much in there as you wish you can create your own tables so you can supply information from your own table you can build in some VPME scripts which will allow you to have notifications based on when the, that particular limit gets to a uh, below a particular count. There's so much more that you can do in there but it will take a little bit of configuration and customization to get there. So if you're after a software based system where you can have a general outlook on your CIs that's absolutely fine you can use the out-of-the-box system there and the way it's currently configured simply import your information or create it manually or alternatively you have to have a think about the audit method in terms of how are we going to get all this information in how are we going to be able to scan the network how are we going to control who is allowed a license how are we going to control where the licenses can go to how we're going to control the costs, etc. So there's a lot of questions involved in managing your software CIs. Um, so you may want to ask yourselves these questions just to, before you uh, configure your support work system. However, meanwhile, if you do have any questions, please let me know.